Well, hey everybody, what's up? Pastor Matthew here. Thanks for checking into the YouTube channel. Hey, we're going to do a little bit of a different kind of review today for Bibles. I've done all kinds of Bible reviews. What I thought I'd do is just let a little picture-in-picture -picture video run while I just kind of talk about this one extemporaneously a little bit here. So I'm looking at the Crossway ESV Church History Bible, and I have to tell you, I'm doing a little bit of competition research here, a little oppo research, opposition research, and it's not because I'm in competition with Cross way at all, though I am currently developing the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible for Thomas Nelson. But hey, we're all friends here in the Bible community. We can all get along, right? So when I heard about the Crossway Church History Bible, I said to myself, hmm, I wonder if this is going to be in the same genre, the kind of thing that I'm trying to do with the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible. And it turns out that we are doing similar things, although with some different nuances that I think make our projects uh, very different and distinct from one another. The most obvious difference being that the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible that I'm working on with Thomas Nelson has one primary contributor, and that is Jonathan Edwards. Whereas the Church History Bible right here, this one from Crossway, has contributions from dozens. Uh, maybe hundreds, uh, I'd rather say dozens of contributors throughout the ages of church history with the notes running along in the bottom. So I wanted to have a pretty close look at what they're doing here because I think that the two most similar Bibles to the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible that I'm working on would be probably this one right here and maybe the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible that was edited by Alistair Begg with the Christian Standard Bible uh, a couple of years ago. Now that one's been out. So let me tell you the good and the overlap between this Bible and the one I'm working on. Nothing wrong with this Bible. In fact, I'm very glad that I got it because I have a feeling I'm probably going to be using this Bible quite a bit in my own research and to benefit my sermons. Probably the greatest benefit to the sermons being that you have this great wealth of quotations and rich materials and resources that you can kind of depend upon as you're doing your study. I don't think that the Church History Study Bible would be a, a good soul study Bible if this was your only study Bible. But like many of the study Bibles I talk about on this channel, it um, is going to do a few things very well, but it's going to have some gaps in, in other areas. So let's just talk about it a little bit here. You get this really kind of nothing clam, not a clamshell, just a slip cover case here. It is well designed. It's very beautiful. It says that they have 20,000 study notes from historical figures, 12 articles by trusted scholars on major aspects of church history, and a glossary of historical figures, plus 60 passage in history callouts. I had a hard time finding those callouts, but they're good when you do find them. Um, so what we have here in terms of the physical form of this Bible is really quite excellent. Of course, it's Smithsone, as everything Crossway does is Smithsone. And I have here kind of an artificial leather cover, but man, it's a really good artificial leather. It really looks pretty amazing. It's two-toned, uh, kind of a saddle style, saddle being down the spine right here, but it really only goes over on the front cover. On the back, it's all brown. It has six ribs, and it's got this really nice church history kind of design right here, so it's going to be easy to pull off. You know, now that I think about it, it kind of looks like something like one of Calvin's commentaries. So here's one of Calvin's commentaries I have right here. Do you see a little bit of design inspiration maybe there? I think that's probably what they were thinking about, something like that. It's going to look really nice on the bookshelf, to be sure. This one is a paste-down liner right here, and it's a decent paste-down liner. It's not the paper that sometimes they use, but instead it's kind of that uh, polymer, plasticky one. And these really end up lasting for quite a long time. Uh, for me. The paper in this edition is really nice and one of the things that I like about this particular edition is that it has a colophon in the back and I wish all Bibles had a colophon. Colophon right here in the very last page tells us some really interesting material about the Bible itself. It tells us who did the cover design, who did the interior design, uh, the typesetting, it tells us the fonts. In this case, it's Lexicon and Gotham. It tells us what paper is in this Bible. I really wish every Bible did this. The paper is a thin, opaque 30 GSM Smithsone or Smithsone done by R.R. Donnelly and Sons, which is a, a publisher that Crossway uses quite a bit. Now, as to the, uh, the internals of this Bible, what it has is the Bible text in two columns here. 
and it is a paragraphed style edition, meaning that it's not verse by verse. And the font is really quite big and pretty easy to read here. Now you can see on the screen, you've been watching the whole time, but uh, the Bible uh, verse numbers are pretty easy to identify. They look like they're bold. They're pretty big relative to the text. One thing that I find interesting is that the references are between the main text and the notes on the bottom of the page, which is very good. I, th I think that's well placed here. Right here on the screen right now, you can see some of the kinds of examples of notes that are featured in this Bible. There's a lot of John Calvin. There's a lot of Matthew Henry. Those are probably the two that I've seen the most. And that makes sense because both John Calvin and Matthew Henry have full commentaries on most or every single book of the Bible. But there's all kinds of other authors that are featured as well. You know, one of the differences that I don't like as much here with what I'm doing with the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible is very often the references of the authors cited are, are vague. They're kind of general. Like, for instance, I'm looking at a page here that says Martin Luther commentary on 1 Corinthians. Well, that doesn't tell me where to find it. And if I did find it, what page it's on, I'm sure I could probably look that up online, but that's still not going to help me to get to the particular page. And all of the sources are really... Um, really kind of done that way here. Let me just find another one that's a good example if I can. Um, oof, I'm just having a hard time finding a good example here because, well, okay, well, here's some from Jonathan Edwards. Okay, so this is a really good matchup. Jonathan Edwards notes on the Bible. Well, where do I find that? In the study Bible that we're working on, you're going to get the exact citation. You're going to get Works of Jonathan Edwards, Volume 24, page whatever, so you can go straight there and see the full context of that exact note. And so on, it's true through almost uh, all of these here. They, uh, John Owen, Discourses Number 4. Okay. Matthew, Matthew Poole, Annotations Upon the Holy Bible. Good. But still, it doesn't tell me exactly where those sources are and how to find them. So that's one thing we're going to do a little bit better, I think, in our Bible than this Bible. Though I'll tell you, this Bible is going to have far more material in terms of total content than the Bible that I'm working on. I really wish that budgets and layouts and word, word counts weren't an issue, but they are. Uh, but Crossway here has done a very good job, and they've put together a really excellent team of scholars to work on every single book. So the main editors for this are Stephen Nichols, Gerald Bray, and Keith Matheson. But if you look at the table of contents, they have a ton of other contributors here. So they've really, really, really done a good job of recruiting people to work on particular books of the Bible. Again, whereas the project that I'm working on, there's only five of us, so our team is, is much, much smaller. Uh, I do like the end materials here in the back. There's a number of articles that go with this, and you're going to probably be seeing some of those on the screen as it's scrolling. The creeds are here. The Apostles' Creed is here. Chalcedonian Definition, Nicene Creed. Lots of articles by well-known writers, including the History of Biblical Interpretation and Exegesis, History of Bible Translation, Patristic Era, the Bible in Reformation, the Bible in a Critical Age, Devotional Use of Scripture by Beeky, uh, the Bible in Global Church, and then a really nice reading plan there at the back. So overall, I think this project is really, really excellent. I hope it doesn't compete too directly with what we're doing with the Edwards Study Bible. In some ways, this Bible does it better, I think, than what we're going to end up with. In other ways, I think we're going to have a different product that's better in other ways. One, one other weakness, and I'm not critiquing this Bible. I, pr trust me, I'm going to use this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love this Bible. I really think it's really good. One other weakness is you have such a multiplicity of authors here that you don't really have a coherent theology within it. Most of the authors do lean reformed. I'm just going to warn you about that. Again, just kind of glancing through, you're going to see Matthew Henry and John Calvin over and over again with a lot of Martin Luther in there as well. But some of the other contributors to this are maybe outside the tradition a little bit more and somewhat scattered and random. So it depends on if you kind of like that randomness. But you're not going to get a, a, a cohesent or coherent view of the Word of God because so many different of the contributors to this book are conflicting with their own theology. Whereas in the Jonathan Edwards Study Bible, which I'm working on, um, though you'll have far less spread as far as thinkers that are contributing to that particular volume, yet you, at least you'll have the benefit of looking into the minds of one of the greatest theologians of all time 
so that you can study the way that Edwards looked at the Bible from cover to cover and hopefully get a pretty good glimpse of the way that Edwards did his biblical interpretation. Okay, I'm going to post a link in the description of this video to this particular Bible so that you can go grab it on Amazon. I do recommend getting it. I think it's going to be a nice um, tool in the chest to have. I love the fact that it's got a great contributors. They really are excellent. I love the references. It's very readable. The paper's great. This is a pretty good Bible to have, so I would definitely recommend you grab it in the link provided below. All right. Well, that's all I have for this one. Thank you so much for checking into this particular video. I do love you lots, and we'll talk to you later.